And I'll be participating because I'll be drinking tea out of my mug okay. that says Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, it's the Book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. And we're here today to talk about some Friday reads, a little book haul action. Do um, you want me to jump in with sure. this? Sure, we're here to one? talk about reading books. I know, it's shocker, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've got two chunksters, actually, we do. to start. Yeah, so this first one is Fellowship Point um, by Alice Elliot Dark. It is a chunkster. Um, this is a book that caught our eye when it first came out a few years ago, and we never got to it. Yeah. Um, but some reading friends of ours that we really trust their reading taste or have similar reading taste, we trust their reviews and we have similar reading tastes. Is that a good way to say yeah. that? Yeah. Um, have really praised it, like Karen at Barker for Books. Um, so we have decided to do a buddy read of this one with our friend Kate from the Bronx, who has been our buddy reading pal for quite a while. And we're not going to be doing any kind of like official Zoom thing with it, but we are going to start a thread on our Goodreads page with a read along for this book for anyone who'd like to jump in and read with us, or if you've read it. Um, the only thing we ask is that if you do comment and then spoilers are involved, to mark it as like spoiler, spoiler alert, just so you know. Right. I mean, I don't know yeah. how spoilery this book could be. I've heard it's more yeah. literary. Okay. I've, I've also heard, I think one of the things Karen said in her review was that it wasn't what she thought it would be. It surprised based, her. Yeah, based yeah. on, I guess, yeah. the descriptions and everything like that. We yeah. also heard from another listener, Melissa, who said it's the book she recommends a lot mm -hmm. to people and just loves it. And the characters have really stayed with her. And I do love a novel like that where, you yeah. you know, you finish it and she's like, oh, I miss them. I wonder what they're doing now. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> so our goal on this one is to finish it and be ready to talk about it by July 20th. Yes. And yeah. we'll put the link to that Goodreads thread down below. The other book that we're both reading is The Lost Boys of Santa Chionia by Juliet Grames. I did just read a part of it where the character pronounce it, pronounces it Hionia oh. with a Y. So yeah. we'll see. We're actually going to be talking to Juliet next week, so we'll ask her that question. <laughs> yeah. um, it takes place in Calabria up in the mountains, and this cover is actually an Escher, M.C. Escher picture that you know gives you a good image to play with in your mind as you're reading the novel and the what's what, it starts in 1960 where a young woman has been sent to start a nursery school there for the little kids and a terrible flood occurs and the post office is devastated and a human skeleton the remains of a human skeleton mm -hmm. is found and then women start turning up and coming to this young woman and saying, I think that's my husband. Mm -hmm. I think that's my son. And so she ends up involved in a mystery when what she was really there to do was open a nursery <laughs> school. And there's kind of that, um, what do they call it in Italy? The hand, the, the, the Italian mafia. I can't think of what it's called. Mm -hmm. But there's a little thread maybe of the mafia. I'm just getting to that part. Okay. So this book does hit right around 400 pages, same as Fellowship Point, if you're doing Sue Jackson's big book summer read. Yes, yes. These are two options. Absolutely. Yes. Big chunksters. Yes. This yeah. one is The Ark, but we do have a physical copy, and that's also our Patreon giveaway this month. Mm -hmm. So if you are a patron, you'll be automatically entered to win. And when does that one come out? That one... This comes out July 23rd. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Cool. So our patron will get the finished copy early. Yeah. We're reading the arcs, so. Yeah, I have a digital arc, so that's my bedtime book. Right yeah. on. And I'm wearing a, I realized today when I put this on, my Borders uh, t-shirt, one of them from when I work there, I don't have very many left. I found this one, like, somewhere, like, so it hasn't been worn a lot, you know. But I realize it's vintage. Yes. Right? Because anything 20 years older is considered vintage. Is that how that goes? Yeah. 
At least that goes. That, that's how it works with cars, I think. Okay. I don't know. I could be confusing things. But anyway, here I am with my vintage t-shirt. Well, you know, cars don't come back around, but, you know, clothes do. <laughs> You're right. So yeah. I mean, there could be different roles for how long it takes for yeah. it to be vintage. You I know? mean, I love, like, the video. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> that is not something that really... I mean, no. I know people, like, make videos, but, right. like, it's all about streaming yeah. or... Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. Anywho. I love it. I loved Borders. Me too. I miss it. I remember they had headphones, you know, and you could listen to mm-hmm. music. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. That was really cutting edge. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day. So we also have two book hauls to talk about. Um, I went to Mystic Seaport Museum in Mystic, Connecticut recently, and you went to? I went to East Hampton, Connecticut to buy bread. <laughs> And I'll tell you more about that, but ended up with books, which is also no big surprise. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah there is a <laughs> biblio connection to that loaf. Yes. yes. Do you want to go first? Sure. So I went to East Hampton, Connecticut. There's a guy there that is making bread. It's called Black Walnut, the name of the bakery. And it's actually in the old public library. It's so cool. It's a beautiful little brick building. Mm-hmm. We'll put an image for you to see. Um, and when I got there, my partner, Jim, said, this is where I learned to read. So cool. Because he grew up in East Hampton. So he said, I read Winnie the Pooh right there on this floor. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. it was really cool. And he, of course, engaged this guy, the bread baker, and told him the whole story, which I'm sure he's heard a few stories mm-hmm. about people who oh, yeah. spent time in that building. But then we walked down... Um, the street to the new East Hampton Public Library and there was a Friends of the Library book sale really nice well curated so of course we browsed and I found this Ann Tyler novel Noah's Compass and I've been kind of on an Ann Tyler she's been rattling around in my mind because we read the book The Editor about the editor Judith Jones the biography written by Sarah Franklin, and Judith Jones edited every single one of Ann Tyler's novels before Mm. Judith now passed away. So Ann has a new editor. Um, I think she's got somewhere like 24 novels. Um, Yeah. And I don't think I've read Noah's Compass. I'm a big fan of hers. Um, All of her books take place in Baltimore, which is where she lives, and she loves that city. And this one came out in 2010, and it's about Liam, who is a reluctant fifth grade school teacher. Mm. And I think he wanted to be a philosopher or something and ends up with a job that he's not thrilled with. He's moved to a new condo in the suburbs of Baltimore, and he wakes up the next morning after his move, and he's in the hospital with a bump on his head Mm. and can't remember what happened. Mm. And that's all I know about it. It's not a very big novel, but um, I'm looking forward to reading it. Woo! <laughs> Woo! It's a I have not soft. read anything by her yet. I really, mm. I really want to give give it a go. Yeah. I mean, she may not be for everybody. She, it's re- she really is good about putting unusual characters together mm. and studying their lives. You know, it's a lot about that and families. She writes a lot about families. She won the Pulitzer. For the book. She really? Yeah, for the novel Breathing Lessons. And she's been nominated a couple times. I was wondering if she might be up for a Nobel at some point. But Nobel, Nobel. So I got that. And then this one caught my eye. Mm. I mean, look at this cover. Love that. Yeah. The Bandit Queens by Perini Schroff. And this is about, this is a debut novel. I love the cover so much. So cool. And um, it's about Gita, who lives in rural India, and her husband has gone missing. Like, she's lost him. But people are convinced that she killed him. Oh, geez. So it's given her free reign to kind of live outside of the societal norms because they're a little afraid of her. <laughs> but then other women start turning up and asking her to help them lose their husbands <laughs> so i can't wait to dig into this one and i couldn't believe it was there this is a 2023 it was a you know pretty popular novel mm-hmm. so you know i love those friends of the library sales 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, some people, they just read books and donate them right yeah, away. So exactly. Thank you to those people yes. who do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, my two books, I went, they're both related ish to Moby Dick. Um, you know, I did a buddy read earlier this year with that. And then coming up at the end of July, July 31st to August 1st, Mystic Seaport does an annual Moby Dick marathon reading marathon and they do it on this ship the charles w morgan this is the last surviving wooden whale ship in the united states and you can go on it um walk around all over inside of it and they do the marathon reading aboard ship which is awesome so anyone you know you have to pay admission to the museum um, but anyone is welcome to come to that marathon you do have to register to do the overnight portion, and I, I'm not sure if that's filled or not, mm. um, but I'm doing that um, with our buddy Colleen from Chicago who's coming in for the experience. And I know Kate is gonna be there uh, during the daytime portion of the, the reading marathon, so super excited. And this is a book all about the Morgan. Um, as it says here on the back, it launched in 1841, and it did 37 voyages um, as a whaling vessel. I picked up this book and I went to the Morgan and I sat on a bench near it and was flipping through the book and yes I saw this picture and it's of Nelson Cole Haley and his wife. He served aboard the Morgan 1849 to 53 and he wrote a book called Whale Hunt which you know I, I noticed it's like a whale hunt and I saw that book, this book, <laughs> in a bookstore <laughs> earlier and I didn't buy it and then I saw an employee sitting on a bench and I asked him, I said, you know, I'm, I'm registered to do the overnight for the marathon. Do you have any words of wisdom, um, words of advice on how to prepare for that? And he said, definitely bring layers to wear because it does get cold on the, cool on the water overnight, even if it's super hot during the day. And then he said, bring something soft to sit on because, you know, it's a wooden vessel. Yeah. And there's not very many <laughs> cushy places to sit. And if you're sitting there for 24 hours, your butt will get, you know, yeah, uh, the brunt of it. So then he mentioned this book, and it is Whale Hunt, The Narrative of a Voyage by Nelson Cole Haley, harpooner in the ship Charles W. Morgan. So that employee mentioned this book because we were talking about Moby Dick. He's like, well, did you read Whale Hunt? Because it was written by somebody who actually served on the Morgan. Wow. He was a harpooner, very involved. He... He had multiple voyages as a whaler on different ships as well. And the employee told me that this book is really great. It's as good as Moby Dick, but it's, it's not as gruesome. Because mm. Moby Dick does have some gruesome parts. Um, hmm. yeah. 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 So I started this one already this morning. I'm really looking forward to getting into it. This guy lives such a fascinating life. Um, in addition to being a whaler, he went out west well, actually, West initially was um, Minnesota, I believe. <laughs> but then eventually he was out in Hawaii wow. and then on the West Coast during the gold rush. I wonder if his wife went with him on the ship. Because remember yeah. how we read about how some yeah, wives did some that? Wives yeah. Did, yeah. So um, these are the two that I'll be reading um, in the coming weeks. And I'll be participating because I'll be drinking tea out of my mug nice. that says Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Moby Dick. Yeah. Unfortunately, my main book buddy here is going to be out of town during yes. that event or else I know you'd come and I would. stay for a couple chapters. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I would love to sleep on the yeah. Morgan. I mean, I'm not sure how much sleeping you'll do. Yeah. You, you, I don't, you know, I'm going to probably do a little because I don't think I could, I know I can't pull an all-nighter yeah. anymore. We have one other show and tell that we picked oh, up. Yeah. This, uh, this is the saga of my eyeglass case. I had a favorite eyeglass case. It was yellow bright yellow so I could see it in my purse or my backpack. I opened it the other day and it went crunch and I was like, oh, well I have to replace it. So I found this wonderful bright green uh, case that I purchased and then this little sticker I picked up at Bank Square Books in Mystic, Connecticut when Emily and I were there just a couple weeks ago, right? And if you can see there, the books that that little shark was holding it's Moby Dick, Jaws, and In the Heart of the Sea. <laughs> um, so I thought, 
that is the perfect sticker for this eyeglass case. And this artwork is by Alyssa Sweet, who is um, a local artist to the area. And she used to be the events person at Bank Square Books and Savoy Bookstore. That's yeah. how we initially met her. And they yeah. have a wonderful rack of her stickers at Bank Square Books right when you're you know, going to check out. Yeah. And she's actually been participating. Um, Westerly, Rhode Island, just started an outdoor market on the weekends, and she's participating in that. We'll put a link to her website down below. She has wonderful, fun images. Yeah, she does a lot of like nautical sea creatures, but beautiful flowers as well. Yeah, yeah. and she... Um, Painted, um, she's painted several murals now, mm -hmm. but the last one we saw was at Charter Books in Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. She painted inside the children's reading nook there. Yeah. Really just very talented artist. And um, I took a paddle this morning, and I have to say, I'm glad I didn't run into any of these <laughs> out there. This is my kind of shark yeah, right here. Right there. Sticker shark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let us know what you're reading, uh, what you're reading this weekend. If you've had a recent book haul, we would like to know it all. Yeah, sure do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Books, books, books. Yes. Can't get enough. All, all right. right. We're going to hold up all, all these all bad up. boys. Bad boys, bad girls. Bad girls. Good, good books. Yeah. Good piles. Good, the good, good piles. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody.